One of the things I wish I knew back when I started forex trading is the fact that holy grail forex trading strategies just don't exist. Now, for those of you who don't know what a holy grail forex trading strategy is, it's basically that mythical trading strategy that's going to give you winning trades 100% of the time. Now, I'll be the first to admit that it really took me a while to believe that holy grail trading strategies don't exist because I was really on a search to find them out there because I really just hated losses. And the problem is I really thought that you had to win 100% of the trades you take in order to make money through trading. Back then, I didn't have a mentor or anyone who sat me down and explained to me that trading was a numbers game and you could still end up making money if you manage your losses properly and aim for good risk to reward ratios. I really had to find that out the hard way by losing a ton of money. And this leads me to the second thing which I wish I knew back when I first started forex trading, which is risk management is king. Now, let me explain exactly what I mean. You see, you could have a trading strategy with a very low win rate. And when I say very low win rate, win rates as low as 30% and you could still end up making money with a good risk to reward ratio. So let's assume that you're trading with a strategy that has a 1 is to 5 risk to reward ratio and a 30% win rate. Now from this risk management spreadsheet, you can see that with the 30% win rate, this trading strategy is going to have something like 9 winning trades out of 30 trades and the remaining 21 trades are all going to be losing trades. But here's where it gets interesting. Because this trading strategy has a 1 is to 5 risk to reward ratio, meaning every time you risk $1 on a trade, you're aiming to make at least $5, you would still end up making about $6,000 with this trading strategy if you're trading on a $25,000 account and risking 1% of your trading account's capital on every trade you take. And here's where it even gets more interesting. You could have different outcomes with the same strategy but with different risk management techniques. So let me explain what I mean to you. On my screen right now, I've got a trade outcome graph. And what this trade outcome graph does is it's trying to kind of like plot what your equity chart is going to look like with the outcome of trades which are in this column. So let's assume you took 30 trades and you're trading with a trading strategy that has a 1 is to 2 risk to reward ratio. Meaning every time you risk 1% of your trading accounts capital, you're aiming to make a profit of 2%. Now, if this strategy had a 47% win rate, meaning you had 14 wins and 16 losses, and this is the outcome of the trades you took, so the first trade was a winner, the second was a loser, third was a loser, fourth was a winner, all the way down till the 30th trade, then you would end up with a profit of around $3,000. US And bear in mind that with this particular sequence of trades, you have 16 uh, losing trades and only 14 winning trades. But because of the 1 is to 2 risk to reward ratio in this example, you still manage to earn a profit from this particular trade sample size. Now with the same outcome of trades, you can have a very, very different result. So what do I mean? You see, with this particular example which I showed you, we are using a linear risk management strategy, which simply means that you have a fixed account balance, which is $25,000 in this example, and your risk per trade is 1% of that starting account balance. So you're only ever going to be risking $250 on each and every trade you take. But if you were to use some other risk management technique, which for this particular example is an asymmetric compounding risk management strategy, guess what's going to happen? Your trading outcome is going to be completely different. Different. Because for this particular sequence of trades, it's the same sequence of trades with the last one which I just showed you, the outcome which I just showed you, which brought in a profit of 3000 But with this one, because we're using asymmetric compounding, meaning you risk 1% of your trading account capital, in this case $250, and if you win a trade on the next trade you're going to take, you're going to risk your winnings along with the 1% which you're risking on each trade you take, and then if that trade ends up being a winner, then you're going to now revert back to what you were risking initially. So if we did this, you can see that the first trade was a winning trade and we were risking $250 and that's why we made a profit of $500 on this trade. Now the next trade which we're going to take, we're going to be risking $500 which is our winnings plus 1% which is what we're risking on this account and that's going to be $750. And because we lost that, now our balance is down to $24,750. So we keep doing this. Whenever we have a winning trade, we risk our winnings along with the 1% which we're risking on this account and this ends up being the result. We would make $4,000. So now with the same sequence of trades as the previous one using linear risk management, we now have an outcome of $4,000 US as profit. And this is bearing in mind that we still ended up losing more trades than we won in this particular sample size of trades. But regardless, even if we were using the 
same trading strategy, because the risk management was different, our outcomes and the results of those outcomes is also different. You can manipulate your trading results with different risk management, even using the same trading strategy. Two traders could take the same trades using the same strategy on the same currency pair, but if they have different risk management, then their results are going to be drastically different. I hope you get this because the moment you get this, you'll see why it's so, so important to really observe proper risk management because risk management is really the thing which separates winning traders from losing traders who have an edge over the markets. Another thing I wish I knew back when I started trading was the importance of learning to think in probabilities. Back when I started trading, I was always worried about the outcome of my individual trade. So if I took a trade and it ended up being a winning trade, I was going to feel so euphoric and I will feel like I was on top of the world, I've cracked the market and everything was just going fine. On the flip side, whenever I took a trade that ended up being a losing trade, I was going to feel so depressed about that for the entire day or maybe even a couple of days because I would just feel like I'm not getting this, why is the market always after me and all of this. But it turns out that that's not how professional traders approach the market. Let's assume you have a trading strategy, okay? Now you are going to backtest that trading strategy, not only to build your confidence in the trading strategy, but to also gather results, which are going to serve sort of like a benchmark for the strategy's performance so that you have something to compare the strategy's performance in the live markets to when you're out there on the battlefield. So let's assume that you have a trading strategy and you've backtested that strategy and for the past 100 trades which you took with the strategy during your backtest, it turns out that the strategy only won like 40% of the time. But because the strategy has a risk reward ratio like 1 is to 2 or higher, it still ended up making money. Now here's where it gets interesting. You would see firsthand that even though you lost 60 out of the 100 trades you took with that trading strategy, you still ended up making money. And so having that mindset, whenever you go to trade with the strategy in the market, you're going to set a goal of taking 100 trades. So it wouldn't really bother you when you see that you take 10 losing trades in a row because you know that this strategy has done something similar in the past and at the end of the day, it still ended up making money because when I looked at the 100 sample size of trades, I only won 40 trades, okay? and I lost 60. Now, because I'm practicing sound risk and money management, in the end, after taking this large number of trades, the numbers are going to play out and the edge of my trading strategy is going to manifest itself. So learning to think in probabilities is the fact that you're not going to be saying the outcome of this trade is going to define my career as a trader. No, that's not how it's done. But rather, you're going to say the outcome of this 100 trades is what I'm going to use to judge the performance of this trading strategy. So after taking 100 trades, I'm going to look at what's the win rate of the trading strategy, okay? What's the risk to reward ratio and how much have I been able to make after this 100 trade sample size which I took with this trading strategy? And then you're also going to compare the results of that 100 trades you took with the results from your back test and that's going to serve as your benchmark for the next 100 trades you're going to take. When you start thinking like this, even if you encounter a series of losing trades, it's really not going to bother you because you know that you just have a goal of hitting 100 trades or whatever. So the fact that you just have this 10 losing trades in a row, it's really not going to bother you because you've already prepared for it. You've prepared for this eventuality, okay? The fourth thing I wish I knew back when I started Forex trading is the fact that Forex trading is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Back then when I started trading, probably you've seen it all too, you know, the Lambos with the Rolexes and all of those things that the gurus show you on YouTube and whatnot. Back then, that was all of the things that we're exposed to and I thought that starting trading with something like a hundred bucks or a couple thousand would help me to become a millionaire and whatnot. But I really found out the hard way that that's just not true. And it really, really took me time. In fact, when I first realized this, I was quite depressed with the reality of trading because I found out that you need a ton of money to make money through trading. If, for example, you need a thousand dollars every month to pay for your bills and all of that, you wouldn't want to fund your trading account with something like $100 or $500 trying to double that account or quadruple it each and every month just to make enough to pay your bills because that's going to be very, very difficult to do and it's going to be very tasking on you. But the thing is, if, for example, you are trading with a $100,000 account and all you did was make like 1% or 2% of that account each month, that's going to be more than enough to cover for your expenses. And when I realized this, back then there were no funding companies 
companies and all of those things. So the priority was how am I going to get trading capital? And it was just difficult because if you didn't have anyone or anything you could do to raise enough money to trade, that would just have you trying to double your account. And the moment you start trying to flip accounts and doing it over and over again, it's just not sustainable. So you're going to end up blowing money, losing hope, doing that over and over again. You get into the habit of thinking that you're going to double this money and you're going to build your account only to reach a very huge milestone and then eventually blow the account. It really took me time to realize that Forex trading is not a get rich quick scheme. And this leads to the fifth thing, which I wish I knew back when I started trading, which I've mentioned a little bit about in the previous example, which I gave you, it takes money to make money through Forex trading. You need to have enough capital for you to be able to trade stress-free without bothering yourself or stressing yourself about the outcome of your trades in order to be able to pay for your bills and comfortably trade for a living. But that's no longer much of a problem with the advent of prop firms that we have now. There are prop firms like FTMO, which is the leader in the industry, the Fibers and my Forex funds and all of them. So the thing is, if you could just settle down now and learn how to trade properly, then you're going to have funding from places you never even expected. But you really just need to work on your trading psychology, your risk management and all of these things. Okay, it's really that important. And for those of you who are still struggling to become profitable traders, I've designed this Profitable Forex Trading Crash Course series, which is a crash course designed to help you go from being losing traders to consistently profitable Forex traders in a step-by-step -step manner. So you can click on the link in the description box to get instant access to the crash course. In the meantime, if you'd like to learn exactly how to pass the FTMO challenges, then you'd need to click on this video because inside it, I lay exactly step-by-step -step what you should be doing, how to plan, and also the strategy to use to pass that FTMO challenge. So click on the video right now to go and watch it and go out there and crush the market.